Hey, 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 hey. We're gonna read chapter 11 and 12 of Mr. Popper's Penguins. So if I screw up on a word, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, chapter 11 is called Greta. So Captain Cook did not die after all. There were two penguins in the refrigerator, one standing and one sitting in the nest under the ice cubes. Uh, they're as like two peas, said Mr. Popper. As two penguins, you mean, answered Mr. Popper. Yes, but which is which? At this moment, the standing penguin jumped out of the ice box, reached inside and took one of the checkers from under the sitting penguins, whose eyes were closed in sleep, and laid it at Mr. Popper's feet. See, Mama, he's thanking me, said Mr. Popper, patting the penguin. At the South Pole, that's the way a penguin shows its friendship, only it uses a stone instead of a checker. This one must be Captain Cook, and he's trying to show that he's grateful for us for getting him Greta and saving his life. Yes, but how are we going to tell them apart? It's very confusing. I will go down to the cellar and I will get some white paint and paint their names on the black backs. He opened the cellar door and started down nearly tripping when Captain Cook unexpectedly tobogganed down after him. When he came up again, Mr. Popper had a brush and a small paint can and in his hands, while the penguin had a white Captain Cook on his back. Gook, said Captain Cook and proudly showing his name to the penguin in the ice box. Gah, said the sitting penguin, and then squirming around in her nest, she turned her back to Mr. Popper. So Mr. Popper sat down on the floor in front of the ice box, while Captain Cook watched first with one eye, then with the other. What are you going to call her? Asked Mrs. Pop. Wait, yeah, Mrs. Popper. Greta. It's a nice name, said Mrs. Popper, and she seems like a nice bird too, but the two of them feel the ice box and pretty soon there'll be eggs and the next thing you know the ice box won't be big enough for your penguins besides you haven't done a thing about how i'm going to keep the food cold i will my love promised mr popper it's already pretty cold for the middle of october and it soon will be cold enough outside for captain cook and greta yes said mrs popper but if you keep them outside the house they might run away Mama, said Mr. Popper, you put your food back in the icebox tonight and we will just keep Greta and Captain Cook in the house. Captain Cook can help me move the nest into the other room and then I will open all the windows and leave them open and the penguins will be comfortable. They will be comfortable, all right, said Mrs. Popper, but what about us? We can wear our winter overcoats and hats in the house, said Mr. Popper, and he got up to go around and open all the windows. It certainly is colder, said Mrs. Popper, sneezing. The next few days there it, ah, excuse me, the next few days were even colder. But Popper soon got used to sitting around in their overcoats. Greta and Captain Cook always occupied the chairs nearest the open window. One night, quite early in November, there was a blizzard, and when Poppers got up in the morning, there were large drifts of snow all over the house. Mrs. Popper wanted to get to her broom and have Mr. Popper bring his snow shovel to clear away the drifts. But the penguins were having so much fun in the snow that Mr. Popper insisted it should be left where it was. In fact, he even went so far as to bring old garden hose up from the basement and sprinkle all the floors that night until the water was an inch deep. By the next morning, all the popper floors were covered with smooth ice. With snow drifts around the edges and near the open window, both Greta and Captain Cook were tr um, tremendously pleased with the ice. They would go up on the snow drift and one of the end of the living room and run down one behind the other onto the ice until they were running too fast to keep their balance. Then they would flop on their stomachs and toboggan across the slippery ice. This amused Bill and Janie so much that they tried it too on their stomachs of their overcoats. This in turn pleased the penguins greatly. Then Mr. Popper moved all the furniture into the living room to one side so the penguins and the children would have plenty of room for real sliding. It was a little hard at first to move the furniture because the feet of the chairs had frozen to the ice. Ooh, this thing's like 
falling. <laughs> um, toward afternoon, the weather got warmer and the ice began to melt. Now, Papa and Mrs. Popper, you really must do something. We can't, we can't go on like this. But Captain Cook and Greta are both fat and sleek and the children had never been so rosy. It may be very unhealthy, said Mr. Popper, as she mopped up the uh, flood, but it it's very untidy. I will do something about it tomorrow, said Mr. Popper. Okay, we're on chapter 12. It's called More Mouths to Feed. So the next day, Mr. Popper called an engineer and had a large freezing plant installed in the cellar and took Captain Cook and Greta down there to live. Then he had a furnace taken out and moved upstairs onto the living room. It looked very odd there, but Mrs. Popper said it was a leap, at least not having to wear their overcoats all the time. Mr. Popper was quite worried when he found that all these things changes were all these changes were going to be very expensive. The refrigerating engineer was worried too when he found that Mr. Popper had practically no money. However, Mr. Popper promised to pay as soon as he could, and the man let him have everything on credit. It was a good thing that Mr. Popper got the penguins moved when he did because Mrs. Popper had been right about the eggs. The rickery had scarcely been moved to the basement when Greta laid the first egg. Three days later, the second one appeared. Since Mr. Popper knew that penguins laid only two eggs a season, he was astonished when a little later, the third egg was found under Greta. Whether the change in the climate had changed, the penguins' breeding habits, Mr. Popper never knew, but every third day, a new one would appear until there were 10 in all. Now, penguin eggs are so large that mother can sit on only two at a time, and this created quite a problem. Mr. Popper solved it, however, by distributing the extra eggs under hot water bottles and an electric heating pads kept just at the penguin body heat. The penguin, the penguin chicks, when they began to hatch, were not so handsomely marked as their mother had, mother and father. They were fuzzy, <clears throat> droll little creatures who grew at tremendous rates. Captain Cook and Greta were kept very busy bringing food to them. Though, of the course, the poppers all helped too. Mr. Popper, who had always been such a great reader, had no difficulty in thinking of names for the penguins' children. They were Nelson, Columbus, Lu uh, Louisa, <laughs> Jenny, Scott, Macklin, um, a D I'm not really good at names, sorry guys, Adelna, I don't know, Isabella, Fernando, and Victoria. Still, he was rather relieved that there were no more than 10, no more than 10 to name. A lot of penguins. Mrs. Popper, too, though, thought this was about enough penguins for anybody, though they really did not make much difference to her in her housework, as long as Mr. Popper and the children remembered to close the cellar door in the kitchen. The penguins all loved to climb the stairs that led up the kitchen and never knew when to stop unless they found the kitchen door closed. Then, of course, they would turn around and toboggan down the steps again. This made a rather curious noise sometimes when Mrs. Popper was working in the kitchen, but she she got used to it and she got used to it so many other strange things this winter. The freezing plant that Mr. Popper had got for the penguins downstairs was large and a good one. It made very large blocks of ice instead of small ice cubes so that soon Mr. Popper had made a sort of an ice castle down there for 12 penguins to live and climb over. Mr. Popper also dug a large hole in the cellar floor and made swimming and diving pool for the birds from time to time. He would throw live fish into the pool for the penguins to dive for. They found it very refreshing because to tell the truth, they had got a little tired of the canned shrimp. The live fish was, um, the live fish were especially ordered when they, ah, excuse me, when they were brought all the way from the coast in the tank cars and glass boxes to 432 Proudfoot Avenue. Unfortunately, they were quite expensive. It was nice that there were so many penguins because when two of them, usually Nelson and Columbus, got into a fight and began to 
spar at each other with their flippers, the 10 other penguins would all crowd around to watch the fight and make encouraging remarks. This was very interesting. Mr. Popper also flooded as part of the cellar floor for an ice rate. Wait, sorry. Mr. Popper also flooded a part of the cellar floor for an ice rink, and here the penguins often drilled like a sort of small army in a fantastic marching movement parade around the ice. The penguin, Louisiana, not Louisiana, Louisa, seemed especially fond of leading these marching drills. It was quite a sight to see them after Mr. Popper had an idea of training, training her to hold a small American flag in her beak while she proudly led the solemn parades. Janie and Bill would often bring their little friends home from school with them, and they would all go down and watch the penguins for hours. At night, instead of sitting and reading and smoking his pipe in the living room, as he had done before, Mr. Popper put on his overcoat and hang things downstairs. They would sit and read with their mittens on, looking looking up from time to time to see what pets were doing. He often thought about the cold, distant regions in which little creatures really belonged. Often, too, he thought how different his life had been before the penguins had come to keep him occupied. It was January now, and already he had dreaded to think of the time when spring would come and he would have to leave them all day and go back to painting houses. So that's chapter 11 and 12. I hope you enjoyed it. And I can't wait to read the rest.